I want to spend a little time talking about the manual package I put together that uh, pretty much covers the functionality and how to hook up the the uh, the Arduino. We we looked at the hardware in the previous video, but this shows the uh, the manual that kind of explains how all the hookups work. So I've got uh, several different I'll call them schematics, but they're really more hookup guides. But uh, you can see the keypad here, which has eight connections. Uh, this particular configuration, which is the default configuration, is for the Arduino Micro, which is the larger official Arduino board, not the one I used in the hardware prototype. But uh, it's commonly available at Radio Shack, and uh, some people may decide to use that. So the connections from the keypad are shown. Um, this is the default configuration, and in the software you've got to configure two parameters to match the hardware configuration you're using. Those are highlighted by these yellow boxes. So in this particular configuration, uh, there, there's actually two output configurations. One uses a single pin uh, for the tone output uh, through the low-pass filter that we talked about in the coupling capacitor. Uh, this gives somewhat lower volume. It, it uh, is called the single-ended mode. And because the maximum uh, output voltage is only 2.5 volts rather than 5 volts on the sine wave, um, you get half the volume, basically, or half the voltage at least. The volume, perceived volume, might be a little bit different. But um, uh, if you use the single-ended mode, it does allow you to pass the, your, your keypad connection straight through into the Arduino without having to shuffle around the pins. If you use this mode, and this is how the software comes, there's two pound defined statements at the very beginning of the code. One defines the LED output function, where that LED pin connection is made. It's pin 13, which mirrors the internal LED on the micro. And the other uh, sets up the keypad arrangement and also how the tone mode is configured, whether it's single or differential modes. And the differential modes and the single modes have different pin outputs, but because they're using the PWM pins on the uh, Mega chip, uh, you're somewhat constrained on which pins you can use. So that's all pretty much laid out in the comments on the code. The code is heavily commented. I think every single line has some kind of comment on it. So it should be quite easy to figure out where to hack the code or to make changes if, if you need to. It, it, in any case, it's all quite structured and fairly straightforward. I, I avoided using any very cryptic software constructions to try to make it as understandable as possible, even if it wasn't maybe the most efficient way of coding it up. But the Arduino compiler has got a pretty pretty good optimizer on it, so pretty much anything you do, it, it comes up with a very efficient set of, um, set of machine instructions for the microcontroller. So this is the first configuration. The second uh, same board, uh, this is for a differential mode connecting to pins 9 and 10. So this gives twice the uh, output voltage on the audio and twice the volume. Um, same, same LED configuration on this one. This has the disadvantage of having to offset the uh, keypad pin over by a couple of pins so you can use pins 9 and 10 for the audio output, which again you're constrained to doing um, by the way the pins are brought out of the 32U4 chip on the on the Arduino. But again, there's a slightly different set of pound defines. The LED is the same, but, but this changes for this configuration. Next two schematics or hookups are for the Pro Micro. Uh, this is for the single-ended version. Again, very simple setup. This allows the straight-through keypad at the cost of using a, uh, a single-ended output, which gives you a somewhat reduced volume, but does make the wiring up a little easier and may eliminate the need for that carrier board I showed in the hardware in the hardware video. Uh, the next uh, variation on that is the differential output. This adds some complexity because as you can see the R1 connection from the keypad needs to flip around to the other side of the board and then pins 9 and 10 are used uh, for the audio audio connections and this also requires an extra output capacitor because you're alternating between positive and negative, so you need some way of protecting these capacitors from re being reverse biased and using two of them back to back through the speaker as a way of doing that. Um, LED connection is uh, moved to a different pin since there isn't a pin 13 even on the micro that's brought out. So on this code there's a slightly different set of um, pound defines that have to be set, but again these two have to be configured correctly in the in the software before you try to compile and download 
the code into your board over that USB port. Uh, now, th this schematic shows the LCD connections. Now, these are in addition to the other connections. It just was too busy to try to show it all on one. But uh, it looks like a bit of a mess, but you can actually see the pinouts on the LCDs here, including the backlight connections. This shows the physical pin arrangement on the module. And these show the actual hookups. So we've got the 10K contrast pot. And we're using an extra pin. We're actually using the TX and RX serial data output pins that normally aren't needed, certainly not needed for this code. We're using those to drive the LCD backlight. Now, some backlights on some LCD modules require a backlight resistor. So you want to check this out very carefully. Uh, if you need one and don't use it, it's going to draw a huge amount of current out of the Arduino and could potentially damage it. Now, the ones I used, I, I took a meter and traced it out, and it turns out they have a 100 ohm resistor on the board, so I did not need it, but you may. So if, uh, if necessary, you want to be sure to use that. Uh, this again is for the micro, and here's the corresponding output pins for the pro micro. And um, in this case, for the pro micro, uh, because of the way we needed to repurpose one of the pins here that was used on the, uh, for, the, um, for the LED to drive the LCD, we ended up moving it over here. And we have a different pound to find that needs to be set if you're including the LCD. So uh, you, need to, you need to configure that parameter in, in, um, in the software at the very beginning of the code after the initial comment block uh, to properly assign that, um, that LED. This is the status LED. This other uh, RX, RX1 pin is connected to the backlight and that allows software control of the backlight on the display. We're operating the LCDs in all these modes in 4-bit mode, meaning only four of the data lines are connected. And the uh, LCD library in the, um, in the standard Arduino IDE supports the 4-bit mode. In fact, even prefers it. So it does save uh, on four wires. And it saves on a lot of pins on there. And I think I've used every single pin on the Arduino Micro Pro if you use differential audio output plus the LCD. There's really nothing left. So. Uh, it was a bit of a strain to get it on there, but it, it all fit, <laughs> fairly. The manual also has this little cheat sheet that shows the, <clears throat> the different modes. The memory mode uh, thing I explained in the previous video is explained here. The volume and LCD backlight control functions are here. The uh, four control functions in normal mode by pressing and holding those keys are shown there. And in addition, I've got a quick cheat sheet for each one of the, of the um, 12 tone modes that show the functionality of the A, B, C, D, and the star and the pound keys. The digit keys always send the, uh, the digit information for the tone mode, so it wasn't really necessary to show that here, although it's covered later in the manual. All of the different modes and how to select them and the corresponding selection key are also listed here. So it's a very convenient little cheat sheet on, on how to configure and operate the box. Then I've got a set of tables that I put together for each one of the tone modes that shows what every one of the keys do and what the specific tones and timings are just for reference. So for example, for the MF mode, the R1 mode, which is what you'd be using for a traditional blue box, all the keys are listed here. The function of the each, each key is listed here. The specific tones and the timings are indicated in the tone column. And any additional notes for what those tones were used for in that mode are also included here. So some of these may be a little cryptic or unusual, but if you poke around the web, you'll find a fair amount of information about what those do. So we've got one for the R1 mode, one for DTMF, one for the C5 mode, one for the C4 mode. Again, with quite a bit of detail about the, the tone configurations. This is the 2600 dial pulse mode, the red box mode, very simple, just three keys active for the nickel dime quarter in that mode, so not a lot of complexity. Uh, this is the R2 MFC mode, uh, the uh, UK AC1 mode, specific uh, tones and timings indicated here, based on the best information I've been able to find. Um, the AC9, the UK AC9 mode, which is a more I'll say modern um, dial pulse mode. 
the IMTS A and I mode, which is quite complicated because it involves a, a tone parity scheme. I tried to explain that as much as I can here. Later video will cover that. <clears throat> the IMTS uh, digit dialing used for the old mobile telephone IMTS mode, and then the even older MTS mode, the manual telephone system dial mode, that was um, that was used before IMTS back into the 50s. So. Um, so that's the documentation package. I think you'll find that quite useful. It does have uh, clues on how to configure the software for your specific hardware configuration.